I love monopods. And that might sound a little weird to say, but we all have our favorite tools and preferences for shooting. And when it comes to shooting with cameras like my Sony a7S III and doing a lot of run and gun type work that I often end up doing, monopods are among my favorite tools for being able to get quick, smooth pans and tilts effectively while not getting in the way of anyone or anything and being able to adjust quickly on the fly. Now, of course, it took me a little bit of time to decide to want to try a monopod and see how that would work with my style of shooting. And when I decided to do this a little over a year and a half ago, I went with one of Manfrotto's standard monopod kits. Now, in terms of the model I picked up itself, which you'll need to hold on, I need my phone for this. I went with the MVMX Pro A42WUS. Manfrotto really loves their long product names, apparently. Now to talk through some of the specs of the monopod quickly, this is a four section monopod that uses flip locks to control the height of it, which I tend to prefer over twist locks. Has retractable feet, which can pack up nice and neatly if you wanna say load this in a bag in a very slim profile, while also being able to have a lock on the top of the feet that will allow the monopod to freely move around and sort of a ball like head when unlocked and then stand essentially straight up when in a locked position. The monopod itself is made of aluminum and weighs around 4.1 pounds and the monopod itself has a load capacity of being able to handle around 11 pounds. Now this monopod packed up into its lowest height stands at around 30.7 inches and at its very tallest with each section extended goes to around 79.9 inches tall. This monopod also has a grip on it which should help when shooting with it and essentially comes with Manfrotto's MHX Pro head which I've come to really like, though we're going to talk about that head a bit more in a second. So again, there is a lot to like about this monopod, and it is the monopod I used probably for a little under a year exclusively in shooting with it. And my experience using it basically sums up why I came to love shooting with monopods. But no product is free from some level of imperfections, and this Manfrotto monopod was no exception to that. So I want to talk about a couple of important points you should know before choosing this monopod, and maybe that will explain the latter half of this video. So number one, panning. Now I mentioned the fact that this monopod comes with the MHX Pro head, which has come to be one of my favorite Manfrotto heads and utilizes their 200 PL plate system, but we need to take a little bit of a closer look at this head that comes with these Manfrotto monopod kits to understand what's sort of going on here. So here we have the MHX Pro head. In fact, we have, of course, a couple of them. As you look across them, they look nearly identical, but what you're going to notice is that one of these does not have a panning knob. And in fact, thus, that head cannot pan at all. Now that is the MHX Pro head that actually comes with this Manfrotto monopod deal. Essentially, Manfrotto, I think, saves some form of money by including a stripped down version of the head they include with it, and that head does not include the ability to pan. So how do you pan with the monopod? Well, you can twist the base around and sort of get pans that way. I'll see if I can include some B-roll on screen that shows me panning in that way with this monopod, but it doesn't look that great. And it was in fact because of this that I ended up going out and getting an MHX Pro head proper separately that had the actual pan knob. But then there's a second point to talk about with this Manfrotto monopod, and that's stability. So first things first, I think we need to clarify what a monopod is and is not. A monopod is not designed to be, nor will it ever really serve as a true one-legged tripod. That is not what monopods are designed for, firstly. Now secondly, of course, I think there's a lot of people that do have difficulty shooting with monopods in general. Ultimately, much like with handheld shooting, which I did do a separate video on this channel on that you can check out, you will need to utilize points of contact to get a steady shot with a monopod. That can include, among other things, placing a foot on the legs of the monopod, having, say, maybe a hand around the lens, a hand around the grip on the camera, and or even leveraging the arm on the head of the monopod so you can get up to four points of contact to be able to sort of steady out and smooth up the shot you're getting. But there are some monopods that are just more steady and stable than others, and this Manfrotto one, I would say, is not necessarily one of them. This is not a monopod that you would want to leave unattended for almost any amount of time and not have a hand or some amount of points of contact on it just to ensure that it doesn't fall over. So while I had gotten around the panning piece that I mentioned earlier, the stability piece was one with this monopod that I couldn't necessarily solve. Enter the iFootage Cobra 2 or C180-2 monopod. And this was a monopod that I think changed my perspective on a couple of these things. Now to talk through the specs of the iFootage Cobra 2, this is a carbon fiber monopod 
monopod. However, counter to the fact of being lighter, this monopod can handle up to 22 pounds of load capacity, unlike the 11 of the Manfrotto. Now, at a closed length, this monopod sits at around 27.8 inches, so a few inches lower than the Manfrotto, but only extends up to 70.9 inches, or around 9 inches less than the Manfrotto overall. Much like the Manfrotto, this is a four-section monopod that also utilizes flip locks, and has retractable feet that pack up nice and compactly, and has a grip as well around the top of it that can assist with shooting. But let's talk about a couple of additional features that make this iFootage monopod really nice. So this monopod does actually essentially come in different removable sections, with a quick locking mechanism that can allow you to take the foot assembly off of it and just use the monopod in a configuration without the feet altogether, or can allow you to actually use the monopod with its feet and say a head in sort of a mini hi-hat tripod mode, which I find is a really convenient option, not just for even mounting cameras and other things at a low height, but also other different accessories as well. Now, while the Manfrotto monopod does allow you to lock the monopod in a sort of upright configuration. You can do the same with the iFootage monopod using a ball-like head and locking that knob into place, but you can also lock the monopod in myriad other configurations if you want a slight angle on it, or you can just loosen the ball knob to keep it completely loose and free, so there is a bit more granularity in terms of setting that. Now I tend to just use the MHX Pro head with the iFootage monopod, so there really is no panning issue or anything here to talk about because I'm just sort of swapping around my heads. But now let's talk about stability. This iFootage monopod is stable. Now again, would I use it in a tripod configuration? No. But could I? Well, ironically, I've been filming this entire thing on the iFootage monopod, as you can now see, and I've had zero issues with this thing toppling over while I've been doing this talking head. Now what this ultimately just means is this monopod is more stable. Yes, you would be able to turn away for a second or two and grab something out of your bag if you needed to, and would not have to try to directly support the monopod at that same exact time you were doing that. And yes, this monopod can support heavier camera rigs in general, and thus still maintain an upright position while doing that. So again, you might have an easier time even keeping this monopod stable and steady if shooting with it or utilizing different points of contact methods than you would say the Manfrotto which you pretty much always have to keep upright at a given point in time. Now again, when you need to use tripod, use a tripod. But having a monopod that's a bit more stable can actually make a pretty big difference in shooting, and I found that is the case. So in summary, I think both of these are actually very solid monopods that serve their purpose very well. And there's a reason I still own both of these monopods, and in fact still use both to an extent, but when it comes to a single monopod that is now my go-to, if I had to give the nod to one, as my personal preference has shown over time now, it would be the iFootage. So that is my head-to-head -head comparison of these two monopods. Hopefully this little comparison and review has been of some help to you. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if it was. I'm definitely planning on doing more gear reviews of this nature in the future. That is all I have to say, so thanks for watching.